Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about cybersecurity as well as different career topics. And in today's video, I wanted to discuss the top paying entry level cybersecurity jobs out there. Now I have made a video before on the highest paying cybersecurity jobs in general, but I do think that those are a bit harder to obtain, especially as someone who just graduated from a boot camp or college or has zero to three years of experience. So essentially your early career. All right, so these lists usually go from the lowest to the highest paying jobs, but I'm gonna start in the reverse and go from the highest paying to the lowest paying jobs. So the first one is a cyber intelligence analyst, and they make about $82,900 per year, partially because there may be cyber intelligence analysts with five, 10 years of experience, as well as entry level ones. But this is one of those really interesting roles. I previously had a mentor who was in cyber intelligence, and they're always digging into really interesting research on cyber attacks, nation states around the world. Your job is essentially doing research, taking a bunch of information out there, and news articles, different current events that happen around cybersecurity attacks and cybersecurity news, and then taking that into some kind of information that is relevant to your company in whatever sector that you're in. For example, if you're in healthcare, the finance sector, government defense, there's a lot of different areas or even specific nation states that your company might be trying to target or not specifically target, but really gather intel on. So it's your job to basically spend the day reading articles and looking at different information. There's a lot of blogs and cybersecurity guides and news sites out there that you're probably gonna be reading on a daily basis. And honestly, news happens faster in cybersecurity than I think in any other sector, just because there's always so much going on, so many different hacks, even if they're not big ones, they may still be relevant to you. Not every exploit is going to be like the log4j vulnerability, but they're likely still gonna be important ones for you to track. So a lot of your job is really reading and probably writing some kind of articles or reports for your internal teams to consume and make some kind of business decisions off of. So this is a really good role for someone who is really interested in digging deep finding out the nitty gritty details about certain events, certain certain cybersecurity exploits and attacks. If you're someone who's always interested in learning what's coming up, the new tools that attackers or nation states are using nowadays, then this would probably be a pretty interesting role for you. The only technical parts of this role, I would say, is really just understanding the technical details of certain exploits. You may need to understand them to a point where you need to explain to some kind of forum or a managerial board, but you're likely not gonna be you know, coding or writing your own scripts to grab data somewhere. Um, you're really just gonna be having your own RSS feeds, reading different blogs and articles, and compiling that information to something that is relevant to your company so that other teams in your company can take action in some way to mitigate whatever exploits or vulnerabilities that are coming their way. So you're really kind of like the very first line of defense for what's coming up in the horizon for things that might be impacting your company. So it's a really, really cool role, honestly, and it obviously pays very well. All right, so the next role is the junior IT auditor. A junior IT auditor makes about $74,000 per year, which again is a good chunk of money. So depending on what you thought when you heard me say the word audit, it may be a telltale sign of whether or not you may like this role, but essentially an IT auditor is exactly what it sounds like. You're going to be working with different teams, most likely IT or development teams, on making sure that their technologies or processes are in line with your company's standards. And these could be internal standards that your company has created, as well as external policies are created to govern whatever sector that your company is in, especially if you're in a more regulated sector like healthcare. So as a junior IT auditor, you're likely not going to be leading the audits yourself. There's probably going to be a lead auditor and they're going to be the ones that are really driving what you're looking for on the audits that you have. And you'll likely be reporting to them on what you found, what you didn't find, what doesn't look right, whatever things that you're auditing in the technologies or processes that the team has. So it's really going to be a lot of digging around, but this role is definitely a bit more technical, checking what encryption a certain team is using, checking to see if you're able to access it from certain IP addresses. So it really depends on your company and how deep that IT auditors actually go. But of course with IT audit, they may not always be a web application to test. And IT audit is a lot more broad in terms of the architecture and the implementation and if you're doing certain things right. So they're a lot more big picture than just than just looking at one specific website like a web application pen tester would. But honestly, IT auditing can be a really fulfilling job, especially because you're on the front lines of protecting your company and making sure that everyone is following the right policies and procedures for certain technologies and types of encryption, etc. And I do also want to throw in that these average salaries can vary based on your cost of living, what city and state that you're living in, the sector, the company, the size of the company. There's so many different things that could change the actual salary that you received on the job. And it may also depend on your experience as well as any certifications that you might have. So I do want to throw that in there as a disclaimer. 
All right, so the next role is an incident response analyst. So if you're not familiar with incident response, you can really think of the SOC or the Security Operations Center. This role is also exactly what it sounds like. They respond to incidents that happen throughout your company, specifically around cyber security attacks or exploits. So if there is some kind of breach that happens in your company, they are usually the ones who spin up some kind of call, get the necessary stakeholders involved, get the necessary teams or executives involved to be able to drive certain changes in a short amount of time to get certain emergency patches through or whatever they need to be able to solve the cybersecurity emergency that's happening. And by the time incidents go to the incident response team, they are most likely true positives and they have been vetted by someone from by the blue team or the SOC and they're really the ones working to fix it. Now, of course, if you're working in incident response, you can likely expect to have some on-call hours and they may be 24 seven, they may be over the weekend. It really depends on the size of your team and how much coverage you need for your company. So I do wanna throw that in there in case this is a role that you're interested in. Just know that there may be certain times where you may be on call or may have to work odd hours if an incident does happen. And obviously hackers will do their thing 24 seven. So that could mean that you get a call at 3 a.m. on a Saturday night. But I still think that it could be a really good role if you're someone who really enjoys working under time constraints and pressure because honestly, there are people out there who work really well in these very rigorous environments, specifically those who are quick to take action and, and are also good at making the right decisions, leading teams, leading different stakeholders, and knowing the correct processes for your company for whatever incidents that you're responding to. And there's also a good amount of incident response certifications out there that you don't need specific experience for. So I'll definitely check those out if you guys are interested in this role. But I do think that this role could be a highly stressful environment for those who may not be looking for a role like that. All right, so the next role is an SOC analyst or a security operations center analyst. Now for this role, the average salary on Glassdoor is about $65,000 per year, but the average salary on Indeed is $87,000 per year. So I'm gonna go somewhere in the middle and say the average salary for an SOC analyst is about $71,000 per year. And this does go back to my earlier point about how roles can pay differently depending on, depending on where you're living and what company that you're working for. So do take all these numbers with a grain of salt on these specific companies that you're interviewing for before you answer that question to recruiters about how much you want to make. And of course, factor in all of your experience, all of your certifications, your education, and everything like that. But an SOC analyst, I'm not gonna go too deep into this because I've made previous videos on SOC analysts and I will link them below if you guys wanna check them out. But SOC analysts can sometimes be part of the blue team depending on what company that you're working for. They essentially man the wall, the proverbial wall, of course. So they're usually the ones with all the dashboards and the screens up and maybe an email inbox. And they're reviewing a bunch of different events that are happening all the time and checking to see if they're true positives or false positives. For example, if an employee alerts some kind of incident or refers your team some kind of malicious email that they received or an email that they perceive to be malicious, that will likely go to an SOC analyst or someone on the blue team and they will be the ones to verify whether or not this is actually malicious or not. And if it is, then they'll bring this up to the incident response team to take it further from there. But sometimes the SOC analyst can also be working hand in hand with an incident response analyst or they could be part of the same team. It really depends on how big your cybersecurity team and I'm not gonna assume that Every company has, you know, the budget or the allocations for a large cybersecurity team that has an incident response team, a blue team, a red team, and an SOC and an NOC. So just know that some companies may have all of these roles in one team, and sometimes that's just how it is. But I would likely assume that is the case for smaller companies out there who may also source their cybersecurity teams from third-party vendors due to budget constraints. All right, next up is the junior penetration tester, and they make about $67,000 per year on average. So this role I was pretty excited to put on this list because I know a lot of you guys are interested in penetration testing, specifically web app penetration testing. And I do think that it is very plausible and possible to get a job penetration testing right out of a bootcamp or right out of college, especially when you have the skills and you have experience using the tools. And I've said this before on my channel many times, but penetration testing skills are one of the freest skills out there you can learn, maybe right after coding, out of like, you know, technical skills that you can learn for free. But all of the popular tools that penetration testers use are either open source and free or have some kind of freemium or community edition that you can download and use on your personal machine and test out. But of course, don't test it out on like google.com. There are purposely vulnerable websites out there that you can actually test on, like, like the DVWA. I think MAP also has your own website that you can test MAP with. 
So there's a lot of websites out there that you can test these tools with for free. And of course there's sites like Try Hack Me, Hack the Box. You can do different hacking challenges on integrity or free year long capture the flags like PringleCon. So there's a lot of different resources out there for learning penetration testing, especially as a beginner, as well as conferences that are made for beginners with different capture the flag challenges. And I can link a video below on penetration testing as well. But at a high level, a penetration tester is someone who goes on a web application and basically as a white hat hacker, tries to find vulnerabilities or exploits on that web application to then write up as a report to, to give back to the development team or the application team. And they're the ones who usually fix it. And then after they fix it, maybe they pass it back to the pen tester and then they do some kind of verification to make sure that the vulnerability or exploit is fixed. So essentially you're really looking for exploits before a actual hacker can find them and take advantage of them. It's honestly a really rewarding job. And I think especially as a junior pen tester, you'll have a lot of resources from ethical hackers that are a lot more experienced as well as the red team, the blue team, and there's just so much that you can learn, especially in a role that's as technical as pen testing. Even as a junior pen tester, even though you may not be, you know, doing penetration tests on really, really big applications, you may still be looking for exploits in the OWASP top 10, maybe not all of them, but maybe the more straightforward ones to spot, like cross-site scripting. And I think honestly, as a junior pen tester, your job is really to learn as much as possible about different exploits that can take advantage of a web application and then eventually get into a more full-fledged penetration tester role to be able to find more advanced exploits on web applications. All right, so the next role is a junior network engineer with an average salary of $59,000 in the US. So as someone who has taken a few networking classes in college, I know it's not for me, but obviously networking is one of the most important foundational things in cybersecurity. And if your network is not configured correctly, nothing is going to be secure, nothing. So what's really important is having a good network engineer and a good networking foundation that's scalable for your company as it grows. So network engineers are always gonna be important, especially for growing teams. So there's definitely a lot of demand out there for junior networking engineers, especially if you have experience that's hands-on. So this could be anywhere from setting up and, and configuring computer networks, maybe doing some troubleshooting with whatever isn't working, trying to set up networks between different organizations because your company may be trying to create some kind of intranet or basically some kind of limited network for the third party vendors that you're working with. And you don't want to do your business over the World Wide Web. So you want to create an intranet for your company and the companies that you're working with. Or maybe you have two data centers that you're trying to connect together to pass information between each other in a very specific way and you want it done more securely. Like what are the configurations or network protocols that you would be using? And of course, along with that goes a pretty deep knowledge of the OSI layers. So yeah, there's a lot that goes into networking and I'm not gonna sit here and act like I am a expert on that because I am definitely not. But I do think that is one of the most important roles out there because you're essentially creating the pipes that, that your company is running on. A secure network is one of the most important things, otherwise nothing can get done. So if you're someone who loves computer networking, then this is definitely a good starting job, especially with good pay, fresh out of college or fresh out of a boot camp. And I also think that it's one of the fields that is less talked about or less hyped in cybersecurity. So there's likely less competition in terms of people trying to get in compared to pen testing and SOC analyst roles. So it's definitely a good option for someone who is, who is curious about networking or computer networks. All right, so the last two roles I'm actually gonna talk about together, and that is an IT analyst or a help desk specialist who make respectively about $55,000 per year and $44,000 per year. So let's start with the help desk specialist or the IT help desk role. And I do think that a lot of people tend to look over these roles because, because they're help desk and they are more customer service based. But I do think that they're one of the most important roles to get that experience on problem solving. Especially if you're someone who is maybe in a bootcamp right now or in college right now. Honestly, if I was someone who was trying to do cybersecurity in college, I would probably have gone for an IT help desk role. Because honestly, so many things can go wrong with a computer, with a network with configurations, with different protocols. And anytime something goes wrong, the first thing people do is call IT help desk. And you know, just think about all the problem solving skills that you would have in terms of technical difficulties. If there's an issue with someone's laptop, is it a hardware problem? Is it a software problem? Is it a firmware problem? Like you guys have to figure out so many different things when you're working in IT help desk. And I know that they don't pay as well as you're someone who's in college, but the role that I specifically mentioned is the IT help desk specialist role. 
So maybe when you start out, you're making not that much money. And I'm not saying that this is a role that you should stay in forever, but I do think that it's a good entry level role. And a help desk specialist is essentially someone who is more specialized in a specific area of IT that can help customers or clients, maybe specifically with firmware or maybe specifically with authentication or certain networking issues. There's so many different niches that can go into IT help desk and help desk in general. I definitely don't think that it should be overlooked as a entry level role, especially because of the opportunities to enhance your problem solving skills, work with different clients and stakeholders. You're really juggling both sides. And that's not something you would get as someone who is heads down in a cybersecurity role that may not have the soft skills and people skills as someone who came from a help desk role. All right, and then touching briefly on the IT analyst, depending on the company that you're working for, an IT analyst role could be similar to help desk, but it could also be someone who works in your company to create or implement certain IT systems. And this could also bring them closer to a systems analyst role. So that could mean implementing, designing, debugging slash troubleshooting or optimizing certain systems that your company may have in place. So an IT analyst role really is well-rounded because you have to work with the business side to understand what their needs are, understand the technology side in terms of what's possible and what's not possible in your company and the infrastructure that it currently has. And then if there are any roadblocks in the way, usually the IT analyst is the one is the one who is working to work through them and continue moving projects forward specifically for, for implementing whatever IT or information systems that your company needs. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Please let me know in the comments below which roles you may be most interested in out of this list. If there's any that I missed and it is also an entry level cybersecurity role, please drop it in the comments below and even have you guys share whatever roles that you guys may have first had when you started in cybersecurity. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.